Welcome to the Lightkeepers podcast. I'm Clayton Vandiver, your Lightkeeper, with the show dedicated to everyone who wants to get the most quality out of life that they can. We don't talk about the end of life here. We focus mainly on the quality of those days getting there. My co-host, as always, Charlene, our licensed clinical social worker certified in the state of Florida, and we invite you all to join us in this conversation this week about the typical hospital stay from start to finish on this episode of the Lightkeepers podcast. Hey, before we start, I'd like to invite you to please leave your questions or comments below and please join the conversation. Questions this week will be answered during our next show that appears online every Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. Eastern. Well, when do family members typically get information from some of these um, players in the hospital, some of these behind the scenes folks that you may never even meet? Will family members get information from them? Hopefully. Um, So there again, this depends on how the hospital admission starts. If you bring yourself to the hospital or if you're alert when you come into the hospital, the first thing that that they're going to ask you once they get past your medical history and, and current situation is, who can we call? And that's not just because they want you to have someone there with you, but that's also because that's someone who can make decisions for you if something happens and you're not able to make them for yourself. That's a very good point. And I've heard you tell me on many occasions that it is best to have a family member or some caregiver, some, someone that you trust with you in the hospital at all times. Absolutely. Um, medical professionals are wonderful people, you know, Absolutely. speaking as a medical professional, but we're also human and mistakes can happen especially if you have someone with an allergy. Um, You know, doctors, not to play into the stereotypes here, but doctors don't always read charts. They don't always have time to, especially if it's someone needing urgent care. They're going to come in and they're going to triage the situation, which means they're going to treat it as it presents. And if you have someone with an allergy, if you have someone with a a pre-existing situation that the medical team needs to be aware of, you're most, you're most likely going to be better off if you have someone with you. Um, the, the medical mm-hmm. setting is no different than any other setting where you have someone who is vulnerable, and that is that it's always best to have someone there to advocate for you just in case. Well, that sort of plays into a few weeks ago we were talking about DNR, do not resuscitate, and how sometimes when in the heat of the moment, or if you're non-responsive, there's no one there to tell them that you have one, they may not know and you may get resuscitated. Absolutely, the medical professional's first and foremost thought is going to be to serve and preserve. Save okay? life. So right? they're going to treat and they're going to do everything they can to keep Absolutely. you, to keep someone alive. Now, if that someone is maybe not wanting that care, maybe they don't want to be kept alive, maybe they're, you know, coming to the end of of a long illness and they don't want that to be prolonged, then there's no one there to tell that medical professional. If they don't have time to read the chart, they're not going to know that there may be documents already in place talking about the, the level of care that you want. Absolutely. Well, you know, I've noticed that time seems to stand still when you're in a hospital, in my experience. Whether you're a visitor or a patient, have you, have you had that happen? Uh, why does that happen? So, have you ever seen a clock in an emergency room? Well, come to think of it, I haven't, no. A lot of emergency rooms don't have clocks. Um, and there's multiple wow, reasons for that. Sometimes it's just an oversight. You know, the hospital didn't think to put one there. Maybe they do have one and you just can't see it from where you are in the room. Sure. Um, but time does stand, does seem to stand still in a hospital 
And a lot of the times that's because when someone is in the hospital, it's a very stressful situation. Mm -hmm. And understandable time passes differently when you're not having fun and it can seem you know a moment can seem to last a lifetime that is true well now as a counselor what can be done to sort of pass the time or to help that situation so if you are a family member um, that is there with someone you can pass that time by being that moral support to them um, holding a hand, talking words to of, them. Yeah, sure. And if you have someone who is very sick, um, talk to them about what they're experiencing because if something happens and they lose that ability to speak, mm -hmm. your information is going to be very valuable to the medical team in helping to, to treat that person. So if they're able to communicate to you along the way, Get, save that information, jot that down, take a notepad and a pen with you. And, and, and keep those notes for the doctors. And it's always a good idea, no matter how old you are, how healthy or not healthy you are, it's always a good idea to have um, either saved in a folder that you can grab quickly and easily, or maybe even saved on your electronic device, be it a tablet or a phone, current list of medications, current contact information for all of the medical professionals that you're seeing, especially any specialist, because mm -hmm. what that's going to do is that's going to make the hospital's job a lot easier in pulling in all the information they need to be able to treat the situation. Absolutely. Well, when you're discharged from the hospital, what happens at that point? Or is that something that since we're running a little short of time, we ought to save for the next show? That is something that uh, we could cover over several different shows. Well, because let's save that for the next Discharges <laughs> are different depending on how someone's discharging, what, what care they need. Right. Right. Well, thank you for that great information about the hospital experience. For a lot of folks who have never been to one um, or who have been to one in, in different situations or just been the family member of someone, that's, that's important. That gives us some perspective to understand what to expect and, and uh, how to handle ourselves once we're there. Absolutely. The, the most important thing is to remember that um, Despite what they may believe, doctors are not gods, and the family mm. and the patient <laughs> does have the right to know what's going on at all times. Absolutely, absolutely. And to have an advocate there uh, speaking on your behalf absolutely. when it's needed. Well, of course, this is all a highly personal choice and no conversation we have on the Light Keepers podcast should ever take the place of your own medical care team or other medical advisor who, professional advisor, who should always be consulted by you on your own specific situational needs. It's always good to be willing to talk about quality of life because every single one of us will face some of these issues someday, either not prepared at all or very well prepared indeed. From joining us right here on the Light Keepers podcast each and every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern. The Light Keepers podcast it is an exclusive production of Animation Studios and is brought to you by A Guiding Light, a 501c3 nonprofit organization dedicated to education and information that allows informed preparation for living the very best life possible. The mission of A Guiding Light is to provide education for professionals and information for everyone else about life planning, available guidance, and counseling that helps individuals and their family navigate options that improve the quality of their remaining days. The organization is committed to training professionals through scholarship grants when needed who will help you find the best information and options to meet your planning needs that are available in your area so you can be aware of your choices, confident in your decisions, and at peace that you've made the very best decisions to live life on your own terms. Visit the website at aguidinglight.org or to make a tax-deductible contribution that helps others find the information and resources that they need, please send your check to the address that's on the screen right below me right now. And we're so grateful for your support. Sincerely hope you'll join the conversation in coming weeks. Add your questions and comments below. Speaking of that, take a moment and hit the like and subscribe buttons right now. It is free! And turn on that notify bell so you'll catch every single episode. I'm Clayton Vandiver, your light keeper. We'll see you next time.